Hi friends, thank you so much for your time. My name is Alan V and thanks so much. If you are first on this channel, kindly consider subscribing so that all the other episodes that we are going to show you on this platform, you will get updates on it. Now, do you know that your calculator is able to work with percentages without any hassle? Yes, your calculator. So, let's go. So, first of all, there is a percentage button on a calculator. Okay, so here is it. And if you look at the color, it has been written with an orange color. That means to access this percentage, first, you need to press shift and then follow by this symbol so you can get the percentage. So, classic example, let's say you are to calculate 40%, okay, of 3,500. 40% of 3,500. Now, a lot of us, you are going to write, let's say, 3,500, and then you multiply that one by, let's say, uh, you multiply that one by, let's say, 40, and then it's equal to, then you divide by 100, and it's equal to, then you get your answer as 1,400. This is correct anyway. But then there is a, another easy way, very easy, okay? So let's go by that. So we are now going to use the percentage button to calculate 40% of 3,500. So let's go. You enter 3,500 on your calculator, and then we are looking for 40%, so times 40, and then shift plus the percentage. So we are having 40%, and that is giving us 1,500. Very simple. Let's say you are also calculating, let's say, 30% um, of, um, let's say, um, 500. 30% of 500. So we have 500, and then you multiply that one by 30%. So you add 30, and then you go for shift, and then the percentage sign is equal to. So the 30% of 500, you are getting this. So this is so, so easy. And that is one trick that we want to draw your attention to. Now, the second one is that, do you know that your calculator comes with a time key? Yes. Your calculator, yes, whatever, whatever you are having, it has the ability to convert uh, numbers into time. So let's say, for example, I want to enter one hour, 30 minutes. Okay, so I have one, and this is the time key. So one hour, and I press the time key, then I have 30 here. So I also go back and I press the time key, and let's say 10 seconds. So you go back and press the time key. So this is one hour, 30 minutes, and then 10 seconds. That's what this one means. One hour, 30 minutes, and then 10 seconds. Okay, so let's now start from somewhere. Let's say we are having one hour and then 15 minutes. So one hour, and then we click on 15. But you must remember to bring the time, and then let's say 10 seconds. And then I go back to the time. So this is 1 hour, 15 minutes, and then 10 seconds. Now I am going to add 1 hour, 15 minutes, and 10 seconds to let's say, um, so let's add it to say 2 hours, uh, 2 hours, you go to the time key, um, let's say 30 minutes, okay, so 30, then you still go back to the time key, and then let's take, let, let's take 50 seconds. Okay, so we are adding um, 1 hour, 15 minutes, and 10 seconds. We are adding that to 2 hours, 15 minutes, and then um, 50 seconds. So I add my 50, 50. Then don't forget the, sec um, the time key. So when I add them, what do I get? Look at it. Okay, so when you add 1 hour, 15 minutes, 10 seconds, when you add it to 2 hours, 30 minutes, and 50 seconds, you are actually getting 3 hours, 46 minutes, and then 0 seconds. So this is so cool, okay? Now let's also go back. Let's say I have 0 hours, and then 30 minutes, okay? Uh, and then 0 seconds. So look at this. This is over 30 minutes. So the hour is 0, the minute is 30, and seconds is 0. I am adding that to, let's say, another 0 hours, and then 30 minutes so 30 minutes and then zero seconds let's see what we get so this is 30 minutes plus 30 minutes what do you get 
So you press the equal sign and you are getting one hour. So this is an, a special feature that you, you need to know. And we can use this to actually solve um, distance, speed, and then time problem. So let's go back to the screen and then solve this exciting question. Um, and this is about um, distance, um, time, speed. A cyclist covered a distance of 23.45 kilometers with a speed of 3.63 kilometers per hour find the time taken so the distance is 23.45 kilometers and then the speed is 3.63 kilometers per hour and we are to find the time taken so what time did it take the cyclist to cover this space and you are aware that to look for the time we know time, the formula is distance over the speed, okay? So to calculate for the time, the formula is distance over the speed. So distance over the speed, that will be fraction. So let's go for the fraction button. So it is distance divided by the speed. And the distance is 23.45. So let's enter 23.45. And then we divide that, okay, by the speed. 3.63 um, kilometers per hour. So 3.63 kilometers per hour. What are we getting? Now we are getting this. And this is um, fraction. So you press the SD button to change the fraction to decimal. So when I press, this is what I get. Now somebody has actually traveled um, 23 kilometers um, um, within 6.3 within 3.63 kilometers per hour and you are looking for the, the time taken you are getting this now what does this mean in real time now we can easily change this particular decimal into time by simply pressing the time key so when i press this bam so you see it means it took the cyclist six hours 27 minutes and then 36.2 seconds that is six hours 37 minutes, uh, 27 minutes, and then 36.2 seconds. So that is an important information that you need to know, that your calculator has that ability. Okay, so let's now go to our third issue. Now, we want to use the calculator to work with fraction. And you know, this is a fraction button, so you press this. Okay, so we have something over something, this is fraction. And this same symbol, when you press the shift, and then you press this same symbol, you are getting mixed numbers. Okay, so now let's experiment with that. Let's say I want to enter 1 over 2. Okay, so I go to my fraction button, you press 1, and then you go down, and then you press 2. So this is the fraction that you are getting, 1 half. Again, let's say I have 3 whole number, 1 over 2. I want to enter that on my calculator. So this time around, three whole number, one over two. That is a mixed number. And to have a mixed number on the calculator, you must first press shift, and then you press the fraction button. So I now have my three whole number. Then you use your arrow key, you go up one, then the arrow key, you go down over two. And this is my uh, mixed number. If I still want to get my mixed number, all I need to do is to press the shift, and then the SD button, you are having this. So this is another special feature that your calculator has as we are entering into examination. Then let's come to Pythagoras theorem. Yes, your calculator has the ability, okay, of solving questions involving Pythagoras theorem. Now let's see. Now we have a triangle on the screen and we have A for this side, B for this side, and then we have C for the hypotenuse. And by Pythagoras theorem, using this particular um, triangle, we are getting C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So this is Pythagoras theorem. Now, let's say there is a question that we are looking for the C. Okay, let's say in that question, A is 3 and then B is 4. And we are looking for C. And to do that, we are going to enter this on the calculator. Forget about this one. Let's focus on this and you see for this looking for c meaning you have to make c the subject so you are going to take the roots okay to both sides and that will give us this okay so a is 3 
and then B is 4. I am looking for C. To do that, you have your root sign, and then A is 3. So we have 3 squared, and then followed by B is also 4. So 4 squared. Okay, and then you press the equal sign. You are getting the answer. It's as simple as that. Again, let's say C is 5, and then B is 4, but we don't know A. Okay, so you just make A the subject. And making A the subject, you are getting this. And this is A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. So we need to find the root. That means the root will cancel the square. So we are going to get the square of square root of um, C squared minus B squared. Now we are saying that we want to take C to be 5 and then B to be 4. So we are going to have the root of, okay, so the root of, C is, so C is 5, so that will be 5 squared, then minus 4 squared, so 4 squared. Then you enter the equal sign, bam, you are getting it. So you can also use your calculator to actually work questions involving Pythagoras theorem. And this is an exciting addition that we are bringing to you, so that you can actually know whilst you are preparing yourself to go and write any mathematics exams. Now, also, this calculator, it comes with what we call the natural display. Natural display here simply means your calculator actually works with board mass principle. You know, board mass, you work, anytime you are dealing with any question, you solve the ones in the brackets, followed by off, and then the ones with division, then multiplication, addition, and then subtraction. Okay, so let's enter this on a calculator and see what we get. So we have 12 times 6. So 12 times 6 and then plus 6. Okay, 12 times 6 plus 6. Then we divide that by 2 and then minus 15. Okay, so let's see what we get. Bam, 60. How is this possible? It is possible because the calculator comes with a natural display meaning it follows the steps in your math textbook. So when solving this, okay, there is no bracket here, so we can't solve any bracket, but we have of, which is um, multiplication, and then we have d, which is division. Okay, so let's deal with the division. So you see that 6 divided by 2, okay, this will give us 3, right? 6 divided by 2 give us 3, using the board mass, and then... You know that um, um, 12 times 2, that will be 72, okay? So already 6 by 2, we have 3. And 12 times 2, we have 72. 72 here plus this 3 will give us 75. And then 75 minus 15, you are getting 60. So calculator works with board math principle. So don't be afraid using your calculator. Again, let's look at this. So, for example, I am having 12, the same question, but this time around there's a bracket there. So, 12 bracket opens, I have 6 plus 6, bracket close, and then divided by 2, minus 15. So, minus 15. And what am I getting? You see, 70, uh, 57. How is this possible? Okay, so, using the board mass. You know, there's a bracket here, so you need to work with the bracket first. So, we are having um, 6 plus 6, okay, and that is giving us 12. So, 6 plus 6 is 12, okay. So, now we are getting 12 times 12. That will be 144, okay. So, 144 divided by 2. Uh, so, let's see. 144, we divide that by 2, okay. So, we are getting 72, and then minus the 15, that's this 15, so minus 1, 5, 15, bam, 7, 57. So your calculator has what you call the natural display. Okay, now do you also know that your calculator can actually work for the area of a circle? Yes, this calculator, it can. you can simply use it for area of a circle. Now what is area of a circle? We know area of a circle to be pi r squared. Okay, so pi r squared, that is the area of a circle. Now let's use it for this question. A circle has a radius of 14 centimeters. Find the area and the circumference of the circle. Okay, so the area, we have pi r squared. And the question says the radius is 14. 
okay and then the pi is 3.142 so we know pi r square that means uh, you are going to square the r okay so the r is 14 so 14 squared then we multiply that by pi you see pi is here look at it so it is written with the orange color that means you first press shift and then you press pi when i press this you see what i'm getting so i am getting this but i don't want my answer to be in pi all you need to do simply uh, you have to click on sd bam so this is what you are getting so whenever you are working don't be afraid to use your calculator so when I enter it on the calculator. This is the answer, 615 points. So you can check it and let's see.